Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here. Welcome back to this mini workshop on the Adobe 3D tools in action. So in the previous video, we took some of the materials we created in Adobe 3D Sampler and we started blending them and mixing them up in Adobe 3D Painter. So we're gonna do the same thing in this video, but with different materials and we're gonna use a different set of tools that are a little bit more advanced, but you know, we're gonna keep everything very, very simple. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are inside Substance 3D Painter, and this is where we left off. Uh, we've already created, kind of like the, and tweaked the materials for these two uh, glasses. So I'm gonna select the ball now and isolate that. So before we tweak kind of like the placement of this, uh, this material, because right now it looks awful, uh, we obviously have to change the, the scale and we also have to change the intensity of the height map. So I'm gonna change the scale, let's say that to, to three. And now we can see a bit more of that uh, extreme <laughs> height map going on. So again, we're going to use the levels and we're going to target the height map and we're going to change that slightly. All right. So something like that. I think that's, that's working fine. Just reducing the intensity of that a bit. And now we can see a bit more of that normal information, um, which is what I wanted. And again, you can use the opacity to tone that down even further. Oops, not in the color. We have to select the, the height channel. Uh, but I think it's just working for the most part. All right, so now we can see those those nice lines um, of the material a bit better. So we go to the normal, sorry, to the base color, and we can change the UV projection to triplanar. So let's go to triplanar, and we can go ahead and tweak some of the, the projection harness. All right, so that's looking that's looking a lot better, uh, and I kind of like the way that these these lines is, are being projected. But you can totally change that. So if you want to go for more of a horizontal set of lines, we can rotate or start rotating these things around, um, like so, maybe something like that. Um, and the way that this is being projected, that has to do with the UV. So if I bring in the 2D to 3D, this is how it's being projected. Um, so it's working for the inside, but maybe from the for the rest of the of the ball is not necessarily working. So you can try different types of projection depending on what you want to achieve. Um, you know, from UV projection to triplanar, uh, sorry, fill match by UV, uh, UV projection, uh, triplanar. You can try planar projection as well, or the spherical projection. So the spherical projection might work um, a bit better in this case, just to place those uh, horizontal lines, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, you can totally go for that just because this has like a spherical shape. So let's go back to the 3D view and you can see that the spherical projection, um, you know, gives you that, that nice setup. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted. So we can bring in the, uh, this manipulator and we can reposition this. Maybe let's set the rotation to 180 so that is more accurate. And let's go ahead as well and start moving this around just to place it a bit better. And we can also scale this all right so let's go for 2.5 that's much better and this manipulator allows you to reposition those lines so that's that's kind of like what i wanted to, to achieve um i thought it was going to be harder than that but you know it's quite easy just changing the the projection to to spherical just because of the shape of this ball um, but you can place you know the center of that projected sphere um, so i'm just going to leave it there and you know the outside is looking good as well Great. All right, so now we have tweaked that, and you see this is pretty much the, the material um, that, we, that we had in Substance 3D Sampler, which is looking pretty good. But what I want to do is mix it up a little bit and perhaps just adding, you know, an, an edge or a, or a border to, uh, to create a, you know, something a bit more interesting. Let me just show you what I mean. Um, I think I have it in there. So this kind of stuff, right? So we have the original material, which is what we want to maintain, but these type of edges or a change in color, a slight variation in material uh, or something like that, that's what I want to, to create. So I'm gonna use some of the other materials that we created. Uh, so let's go to the material library and I'm gonna type ceramic and let's, let's use this orange ceramic, drop that there on top. And there we go. Again, we have to go ahead and select the height map. I'm going to reduce that quite a bit. 
and also increase the scale. Um, in this case, we probably don't need to do the triplanar projection or the spherical projection because it's just going to be a tiny bit of additional material on top. All right. Uh, of course, one thing that we need to do is make sure that there is a difference in color just so that it's not the same thing. Uh, and we can do that with different elements. So we can select the, the material and click on Add Fill. Right. So remember, this is the same thing that we use in the in previous videos. So we're just adding a fill layer to the entire material, but it's still there. So what we can do is change the uh, blending of this fill layer to uh, be color. So now that we set this fill to color, we're actually taking advantage of the luminosity and the and the values of the ceramic rough orange. Um, and we can just go ahead and change this color right, to anything that we want. So let me just go for a lighter greenish light color, <laughs> something like that. I think that might be interesting. And let's go ahead and target kind of like the edge. So for that, we can do a couple of things. We can select the material, go to black mask to create that mask, and maybe add a generator, all right? So we've already used the curvature, but we can use something else like this metal edge or fiberglass, or maybe the dirt one might be interesting. So I'm gonna choose metal edge just to see what that gives us. And yep, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted. So we can go ahead and tweak all of that, but we can change the, the wear level. That's going to give us something closer to what we need and the wear contrast as well. So we can push it a bit more. And I kind of like that there are some bits and pieces of the other material um, sort of creeping through. So that's that's cool. Um, we can also add less on or more of that ground amount and use the edge smoothness just to increase or decrease the reach of that effect. All right, so I think, you know, um, ultimately keeping it simple um, helps you to understand how things work. So I'm just going to keep it simple. And this is exactly what I wanted. Um, the only thing that I want to change is the the height map. So you see, um, it's kind of like hard to see, but this this material is actually pushing in. So I think I kind of want this to be uh, a thicker part. So I can take this fill layer, for example, and we can play with the height map. I'm going to push this forward a bit more. Oh, maybe that is too much. It's all about the subtleties again. Yeah, something like that is a lot better. And and I think that's it. That's all I wanted to do for this. Um, so you see, it's it's quite um quite simple the setup, and you can you know you can fine tune it maybe in the in the mask itself. Maybe this is like too extreme, so you can reduce the the grunge amount quite a bit. Maybe increase the wear contrast. But though, all of those things is once you have the, you know, the material set up and the and the mask with the generators all set up, this is very easy to do, right? Let's say that I don't want to have this color anymore, so I can just go to the base color, click on my fill layer, and you know we can go for something a bit more, a bit brighter, right? Maybe something that goes with the rest of the of the set, uh, perhaps kind of like a greenish tone, something like this. I think that's not bad. Um, and also, you know, we can increase the uh, the roughness as well of this value. So let's go to the roughness so that we can see exactly what we are affecting. And you can change that, right? So you can make it super rough or we can make it a bit more reflective. Let's go back to the material. And now we have, you know, a nice, uh, a nice contrast between the roughness of that edge and the rest of the, of the bowl which is, is quite nice. Uh, cool, so that's all I'm, I wanted to do for this one. And just to wrap up this um, this setup or the, the, the materials blending, we're gonna concentrate on this one, on the, on the joke. So I'm gonna select that and isolate that piece. And I'm gonna use the ceramics, the black ceramic with no cracks. And I'm gonna use um, the levels again, just to tweak and target the height map. So I'm gonna go ahead and tweak that to reduce it quite a bit and also change the opacity. Oops, remember to always change uh, to the channel that you want to affect. So in this case, just want to reduce the height map. And now selecting the base material, we can go ahead and play with the projection and rotation. So I'm just going to rotate things around and maybe change the scale. So let's go for two. I think two is fine, actually. Right. So that's that's pretty much all there is to it. So uh, just by changing the, you know, the intensity of that height map, uh, this is the material that we got from 3D Sampler and 
for the most part is just ready to go so of course we can go ahead and add more let's say more damage to it and maybe tweak the the roughness and that sort of thing and that's kind of like what i'm going to show you right so you can take advantage of whatever i've been doing with the other pieces you know generators um different projections for the different textures adding fill layers custom mask that you can paint on on it um that sort of thing but i'm going to keep it simple again so what i'll do is add a new layer so this is going to be a fill layer that has just a color in there uh, but this fill layer has color metal rough uh, normal and hide maps uh, available as in different channels so what i can do with this is play around with the roughness so i'm going to click on everything but roughness and color so in other words i'm going to leave the color and the roughness enabled so, so i can see the color and the roughness and i'm going to change the roughness to be quite reflective and also the base color to be you know something bright like i don't i don't care which color we're going to remove that later on but this is just so that you can see the effect all right so let's do a black mask and in the black mask i'm going to use a fill layer so this is a fill layer that is going to affect just the mask not the the actual color layer uh, so it's just the mask and i'm going to use a procedural so let's go to the textures and let's scroll down or type procedural or maybe like a grunge so grunge grunge paint scratch this one seems to be a good one so i'm going to click on that and drop it in the grayscale so now this grunge is determined or is um tweaking the the mask or is creating a mask really for this green color and that's the reason i keep this color very bright because then i can see exactly what this mask is doing so i'm going to take that grunge and play around with the balance and the contrast as well all right and this is a good starting point but we can make things a lot more complex so let's go ahead and bring in uh, maybe like a generator and we can use something like uh, maybe dirt so i'm going to click on dirt and now this is going to kind of like focus on the areas where the dirt would be accumulated so we can play we can play with this dirt level like so contrast um, and we can actually blend these two together like i've been doing with the previous materials right so we can do uh, we can subtract but that's not what i want we can multiply it we can overlay it on top so now we have two pieces or like two different effects one is a generator and another one is just a fill layer contributing to produce this interesting mask which i think is pretty cool all right but all of these that i'm doing is not to create a green color that looks awful so what i'm trying to do is just break apart that roughness a little bit more right so now i can go back to this layer and i can turn off the color because that's not what i want and i can use the roughness to change the values of that um, only in the in those areas that i chose right so maybe something like this so you see it's not everywhere and you can come back to the to the mask if you wanted to um, and tweak the balance just to see in which areas there is a, a bit more of a reflection and what areas are more rough all right i think that looks good so we can turn this on and off to see so just by doing that even though the material itself that we created in 3d sampler it, it was a, a pretty decent material we can go ahead and further enhance things like the the or break apart the roughness which makes it a little bit more interesting something else that we can do actually is going to create a new layer and let's do the same the same deal just make it a pretty bright color turn everything but the roughness and the color and i'm going to type fingerprints there we go so we can use this to generate some kind of like greasy fingers uh, grabbing this um this piece so i'm going to drop that oops let's create a black mask first and a fill layer let's drop that in there and there we go we can go ahead and change the scale something suitable for the size of this of this jog so maybe maybe three yeah i think three should be fine right and um, we can play with the balance and the contrast as well and i'm not sure if this is what i like so maybe try a different one maybe this one all right and i'm going to go ahead and turn off the color now and just play with the roughness of this 
and just add some some greasy fingers so let's go ahead and select the crunch as well and add contrast to it and remember you can hold the alt key to access this mask to see exactly what we're doing all right very very subtle you almost don't see it but it's there um, and we can also go ahead and add some uh, maybe some cracks some additional uh, damage to it and all of that can be done with these fill layers so the base material that we created in 3d sampler is already pretty decent but if we keep adding these layers like so uh, we can go ahead and use this to create um, the cracks so i'm gonna go for something like this um, obviously the roughness we're gonna have to set this to something pretty rough um, and that's it <laughs> let's go ahead and bring in a black mask and we can try to find something like cracks or chips maybe grunge shavings maybe this is a good one so let's add a fill drop that in there and there we go so though now we have those chips um kind of like added additionally on top of that base material right and we can go ahead because this is a fill layer we can manipulate things like the the height so we can push that in or push that out but obviously makes sense to push that in um, and again we can play with things like the roughness independently from the rest of the the material uh, but i want this to be pretty rough and also the color we can go for something similar to this so that it doesn't you know doesn't feel too different and of course going to the actual grunge or the mask and we can play with the balance right so we can push that even more more contrast so now we're damaging <laughs> this quite a bit uh, but it's fine let's go ahead and scale this to two just to make them smaller and you see the difference if i turn this on and off right straight away so this one is a lot more damaged than than what we had before um, in fact let's just reduce the intensity of the height map so let's go for minus 0 0.02 and i think that's working a lot better there we go and maybe just make this a tiny tiny bit darker all right so again <laughs> uh, i'm trying to keep everything pretty simple for this workshop but um this is the type of things that i spend a lot of time doing just you know turning things on and on figuring out like okay this works but maybe uh, it is too much here towards the top so oh, i'm doing i'm gonna do something different so that's one um one of the things that i wanted to to make sure that i show now for example the the fact that this thing is damaged or that it has all of these chips and all of that that's probably from you know someone not handling it properly or uh, dropping something next to it or, or whatever right so it doesn't really make too much sense that this same level of damage is inside because you will have to i don't know drop maybe like marbles or something in there that actually damage the inside so if you wanted to you can add another inside this mask right the ones for these chips we can add a add paint layer and i'm going to go ahead and select this polygon fill and we can select the uvs and i'm going to click on that and that sort of um, fills the entire thing so i'm going to press the x key on my keyboard to flip the color you can just click on this icon right here and i'm going to select it again and now we basically hit all that from this uh, from this layer right which is great now if you want to go a little bit further than that uh, let's say that this edge at the top is the one that is more damaged than than anything or maybe something at the bottom right so you can add another layer or another effect to that layer to that mask so let's do a generator i'm going to use a curvature and from the properties of that curvature we can just go ahead and play with the with the global balance a bit more and add a bit more contrast so you see it's kind of like targeting that bottom area although it's a little bit too strong for what i want to achieve so maybe not that one let's clear that let's use a generator and this time what i'll do is i'm going to use the world space normal so i'm going to click on that and now we can have like a gradient that we can play with so the world space normal is one of the mesh maps that we added and we set up and we can just go ahead and play with the balance contrast as well and you see you have this uh, top to bottom so that's the one that i'm trying to get there so i'm going to increase the contrast quite a bit so that we can actually see there we go 
I suppose that this is something more for a uh, kind of like a dirt material or like adding dirt rather than damage. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually better for, um, you know, some kind of dust or something. So I'm going to remove it and just keep it simple, as I said. And if you want, you can just add manual details. So you can add a new paint and go to the brushes and, you know, select something like charcoal fine line and just go ahead and paint, you know, a bunch of scratches like that if you wanted to. Which, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> um, sometimes you, you, you might surprise yourself from, like, the different things that you tried. Right, so this is this is kind of interesting. A more manual way to add this this damage. Um, again, you can turn this on and off if you don't like it. You can keep it simple or turn the entire thing off and then go back to the base material that we had. Um, but we also had a couple of variation in the roughness that makes it look a lot more interesting. And I think, yeah, I think I don't mind this, but I'm gonna turn it off. All right, and just to integrate this with the rest uh, because. You know, everything has like a, a bit of color and, and makes it look more interesting. What I can do is use something like this ceramic and put it inside, but very, very reflective. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the materials type ceramic. And I'm going to drop that in there. And again, I'm just going to change the, the scale. So let's set it to three. And go to the height map. I'm going to replace the the other height so basically replacing everything from this material and i'm going to change the intensity or like the opacity sorry all right and what i'll do is i'm going to create a different layer to control the uh, the roughness of this material so let's create a new layer and i'm going to set everything to off except the roughness so i can control the roughness of this material by doing this Right, and the other thing is maybe another layer to control just the color. So I'm gonna name all of that, otherwise I'll forget. Um, and I'm gonna set the color blending mode to color, just like what we did with the edge of this um, of this bowl. And I'm gonna set it to maybe like another a different, slightly different blue, darker color. Right, uh, or we can also set it to multiply as well. And just go for a brighter color. Yeah, I think that works. Cool. So I'm going to right click or double click and set this to color or call it color. Double click this layer, call it rough. And I'm going to select the three layers, right? So these three layers are basically the ceramic material, the rough for the entire and the entire mesh. Um, let's just go into solo mode here. Yeah. And, and the color to change this a little bit. So I'm going to take all of that and hold Control and G or click on this folder um, icon so that we can group everything within one folder, right? And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can add a mask just for the group. So I can keep adding any layer that we want within it. So I'm going to go to Black Mask, add a paint layer, select the inside. There we go. So now the inside is this um, nice aqua color and it has a different reflection or different roughness as the rest. Um, so what I'll do is also with the with the paint brushes, I'm gonna go for dirt. Let's go for dirt too. I'm gonna add another paint layer so that I can do I can keep all these effects separate and I'm just gonna start painting on the on the edges of this. Um, if it is a little bit hard for you to, to do that, you can just switch to the 2D and 3D view. And we can just go ahead and paint from this angle. Let's go closer here. If that is too much. Let's go to the properties of that brush. I'm just going to edit this so that it's faster. Um, I'm going to keep the flow to the maximum so that whatever I paint straight um, is a straight black or white color. And that's going to make it a lot easier to just target those those edges. All right. Go to the 3D view, um, and we can just concentrate on a more manual placement. And also, if you want to push this a bit further, you can take, let's say, uh, whichever. Maybe you can add a new layer and just call this one hide. 
and turn everything off except the height and the normal if you wanted to and with this height you can just push things up and down so i'm gonna add a tiny bit let's go for 0 0.02 just a tiny bit so that it feels like there is a coating uh, with a different material in there and another thing is maybe this is too harsh in terms of the the transition for this specific layer right so you can add another layer so let's go to this mask and go to add filters and i'm going to use a blur so i'm going to type blur here and i'm just going to add a bit of blur blurriness to this not too much just enough to to complete the effect really and if you want to go ahead and variate that edge a little bit more i like to use the warp filter so i'm going to add another filter i'm just going to type warp and that's just going to give a, a tiny bit of warp <laughs> or like this, this stored the edge a bit more, right? Which is kind of like exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a little bit, you know, the back and forth is is kind of like the fun part of this of this stage. But now we have um, a nice color inside of this um, of this jog. But uh, and you can go back and you know continue adding more or remove some of the the bits and pieces. But I think I'm happy with this. And if you want to have even more fun, <laughs> what you can do is add a new layer. Let's just add a new paint layer. And we can use some of the particle brushes. So I'm going to type particle. And we can use, let's see, probably leaks. And the particle brushes I'll just work with the, with the normal and all the mesh maps. So I can just click here. And Painter is just going to drop this in there. So if you want to create something a bit more you know, realistic in terms of the dripping of this um, other material into the next one, uh, you can use this. Uh, let me undo that. You can also use heavy leaks. So that's going to probably be a stronger version of that. Um, but anyway, I, I like to keep it simple <laughs> like this. Just want to show you that you can also do that and you can control that effect all within one layer. So I'm just going to turn that off and, and leave it as it is. But the fact that we have all of this um, complex mask that we generated to, to be able to see only this area of the material in one folder allows us to basically collapse that, right? And we have all of these layers that we can control the, um, the effect of this material inside this, this folder. So essentially we have all of these four layers. We can actually right click and give it a color just so that you can see a little bit easier which ones I'm gonna affect. Uh, but we can go to the color, right? And we can change that color without affecting anything else but the color. So make it a bit more, a bit brighter. Bring the rest of the models. Um, and that way we can sort of integrate it, make it part of the same set at least. So the only one that doesn't feel part of the set is this, this one right here. So, you know, we can go back to this one. And this is just some final adjustments before we go into the render. So I can take this, maybe see if the, if the alternative yeah, I think the alternative goes is more in line with the colors and, and the whole set. So I think I'm going to keep this one. Um, I kind of like it. Yeah, a bit more. Um, the only thing I want to do is maybe variate the roughness a bit more. So I'm going to use the same techniques that I show you just to wrap up this video, uh, which is basically create a new fill layer to control the roughness. Right, so that controls the roughness of the entire glass. And I'm going to bring in a black mask and a fill layer for that mask go to the textures and let's just drop this in see what that gives us i'm gonna select the roughness so that i can see what i'm doing and maybe let's scale this to to two so now if we get out of this roughness mode and go to material we can now see uh you know some rough patches uh, i'm not entirely sure if i like this one actually so let's just go for another grunge and drop it in there play around with the balance to alter or change the roughness. Set this to two. Oops, I think I just dropped the roughness into the wrong area. So I'm gonna turn that off by just clicking on it. Um, select the, the actual grayscale. So I just made a mistake of dropping this into the actual, um, you know, layer itself, not in the mask. So again, selecting the mask and selecting the grunge now I'm going to replace it. That's why it was a little bit hard to see. Set it to three. Had a bit of contrast as well. And let's have a look at 
the roughness map. That's the roughness. And we can select the actual layer and play around with a variation of that. So let's go to material and we can control the entire roughness of this glass just from this roughness uh, slider. And the only thing that this layer is doing is um, letting me change only certain areas uh, of the roughness. <laughs> so hopefully that makes sense. So basically what we have is a layer that controls the entire roughness, but this layer has a mask, so it allows me to only change the roughness in whatever areas this is whatever wide areas um, we have in this mask, right? So everything that I'm changing in this in this layer is is changing only in the wide areas. I think I'm happy with this, and this is actually coming along nicely in terms of you know they they feel kind of like part of the same set, uh, and it's slightly different. So the previous one that I had the previous material wasn't working as well, uh, but this one is. So yeah, I'm happy with that, and that basically brings this uh, setup of materials to a conclusion. So now that we have all the assets with all the textures and all the materials applied to it and blended and, and all of that, we're gonna move on into 3D Stager where we're gonna put everything together into a nice scene. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty simple and quick video because it is very, very simple and we can actually move um, straight from Substance 3D Painter into Stager. So I'll see you in the next video, which is gonna be the last one of this workshop.